Uh, for what purpose is a gentleman from Washington seek recognition? Move to strike the last word. Uh, so moved. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Earlier in my career, I had the unbelievable privilege to serve as chief of staff to the governor of the state of Washington, Booth Gardner, who served from 1985 to 1993. Uh, he has since passed. He was my dear friend. I miss him still, in part because he taught me so much. And one of the things that he taught me was that so much of life is about balance. And I cannot help but feel as though the opposition to this amendment, which would restore this authority to the CFPP, is losing balance. Because it seems to suggest that, <laughs> that there's too much investigation of financial fraud, that there's too much investigation of unfair, deceptive, and abusive acts and practices. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure I know anybody that believes that. To this day, lo, eight years later, I cannot believe the number of times I have sidewalk conversations, conversations in the church, narthex, grocery carts bumping into one another, where what I hear is, has anybody yet been held accountable? the Great Recession and the crash, and indeed there's a good case to be made that nobody has, that there wasn't enough investigation of financial fraud and unfair and deceptive and abusive acts and practices. I'm also reminded of the ancient Greek who once said, give me a light so that I might find my fellow man in the darkness and a sword to defend myself should I come upon them. And that seems to me to be a metaphor for the balance we should strike here. The light is showing the way for the good actors. Because in the best case scenario, we have long established rules with precedent and guidance that helps them and creates, as the gentleman from Minnesota alluded to, a level playing field against those who would seek to cut corners and take advantage of it. I'd also like to see us have more light. That's why I've worked so hard to get us to the point where we can have advisory opinions and no action letters. Be much happier if this was a conversation about how it is people could file to, uh, to market new products and be given assurance ahead of time that th they would meet the standard of the law. But we can't seem to get that bill passed. We can't seem to get that additional light for the good actors out there. So the sword for defense, of course, is the authority to pursue those who engage in unfair, deceptive, and abusive practices. I don't know if you remember this, but lo those many years ago, there was the Enron trading scandal. And I can remember like yesterday, hearing the tape conversation of the trader who hung up the phone, having sold an elderly woman product he knew was no good, and laughing about taking her last dollar. Laughing about it. The truth of the matter is there are bad actors out there. There are people who are scam artists, and there will continue to be. We don't all have just better angels on our shoulders, and we need help to protect the elderly, one another, the vulnerable. They are as innovative in their scamming as the good actors are in the pursuit of new and innovative products that make, meet the needs of consumers. I thought the chair said something really important earlier. He acknowledged that what Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo did, in his opinion, was theft. Gosh, we don't need any additional authority by anybody, any entity, anywhere. It was theft. Has there been a single individual from Wells Fargo indicted? No. Has there been a single individual from Wells Fargo convicted? No. Has there been a single individual from Wells Fargo jailed? No. Evidently, it's okay to steal a little bit of money from a lot of people. But I don't think so. I think we need both the light and the sword. I think we can do a better job of balance. 
I think not to endorse this amendment is to throw this completely out of balance, completely out of balance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.